Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Class Point User Insights. So today we have a very special guest, my colleague Vanessa, and she's here to give us some expert advice on emotions in the classroom. So she's going to share with us a little bit how positive and negative emotions affect students, different ways to build up that positive learning environment, and how Class Point can help doing this. So stick around and check out the awesome PowerPoint template that she designed for all of us at the end of the video. Okay, so Vanessa, welcome to your first of very Hi, many, Tom. I'm sure, <laughs> Class Point User Insights video. I'm so excited to have you and to hear all of the knowledge that you have to share with all of us. So before we get started, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, prior to joining the education industry, I was actually working in Albert Bound as an outdoor adventure trainer. And after which I actually started to join the um, school in Singapore as an experiential learning specialist. And thereafter I went on to become a lecturer, become trainer. Yeah, so that, that was my experience in the past um, 10 years of my life, yes. Wow, that's great. Okay, so I've really been looking forward to do this video with Sarah in which I could actually be sharing about um, how we can create positive learning environment in the classroom so that students can be in a better frame of mind for learning to take place essentially. That's so great. Yeah. So can you start out telling us like a little bit about, you know, why we should even take into consideration our students' emotions before or during the class? Yeah, of course. Because the thing is that, you know, when people are experiencing stress, um, negative emotions, the part of the brain which is responsible for managing higher level executive functions is impaired. And at the same time, our primitive emotional responses like our fight or flight responses start to become strengthened. But we all know that higher level thinking is needed in learning, such as like planning, organizing, and goal-directed behaviors. So in order for students to be able to engage their higher level thinking skills, teachers can help students experience more positive emotions at the start of the lesson. Yeah. Mm. So the start of the class is actually the best place to start. So do you have any suggestions for teachers to kind of get students into that right frame of mind right from the beginning of the day? Oh, yeah, of course. So perhaps it's a good time for me to show you how what, what some activities that I have designed. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, this deck of slides, I've called it Start Your Lessons on a High. Okay, I've designed a total of six activities, but for the interest of time, I'm not going to be sharing all six. I'll just be touching on a couple of them. Okay. Now, do note that all these activities um, have one common purpose, and that is to create um, solicit, in fact, uh, positive emotions from students. Okay. As we all know, not everyone starts the day on a right with a right footing, and I'm sure all of us have been through those days, right? So, how do we actually get students to feel great so that student they could, could, uh, effective learning could take place? Now let's just look at the first activity I'm going to be sharing with you. And it is an image upload activity in which you could get students to share about or uh, take a picture and um, upload it to just share their favorite food, a picture taken with their family on a vacation, their pets, anything at all that makes them feel great. Yeah, okay, that's super this, Sarah? Yeah, that's really fun to see how different um, the students have uploaded images because not obviously everything makes everyone happy in the same way. So definitely cool to also get to know your classmates a little bit more as well. Yeah. Okay. And the next activity that we could consider is what we call the uh, short answer activity. Now, this is what I call an affirm your body day. Now, more often than not, we, are, we probably are more critical of others than we are being affirming of them, right? And I'm quite sure all of us would feel great if somebody were to praise us or to appreciate us for something that we do. So like in this case, uh, from your buddy day is about getting the students to think about uh, something that they really appreciate their buddy for. So their buddy could be basically somebody who sits beside them. Yeah. So getting them to just share uh, what the, the, their buddy's strength is also allows Students from the rest of the class know that, hey, you know what? My partner sitting beside me is so great. You know, he is really very um, jovial. He's always bringing in the energy in the classroom and he always helps me in my work, for example. So yeah, consider doing this in class. And I'm sure from here, these different responses, we could also see what other students are saying 
about yeah, I mean, if somebody said these things about me, I would be so happy. <laughs> but yeah. what what do you have to say if teachers like, you know, these activities are really exciting, they're really great, but my class time is so small anyways, like I'm pretty crunched. I don't have, I don't have time to add in these classes, um, these activities mm-hmm. into my classes. Yeah, I mean, this, this particular problem is really very common because uh, being a teacher myself, sometimes I don't even feel that I have enough time to do any other activity. But you know what? Frankly speaking, Sarah, all these different activities that I'm proposing here does not have to be disjointed from your lesson. In fact, it will be even more powerful if the activity is linked to your content because then the students are actually learning something and uh, rather learning something and having fun at the same time. So if we look at this example here, like, um, okay, this is an example of asking the students about where their favorite hangout is, right? As we all know, even though our hangouts could be at different places, but essentially they elicit the same kind of feelings, positive emotions, as well as positive memories. So over for this activity, we could get the students to annotate on this slide, right? to launch this slide drawing and click on it. Students will be able to annotate on this particular picture to indicate where their favorite hangout is. And because I'm based in Singapore, I'm just going to be putting a Singapore flag. But feel free to change this map to anything that you want. Okay, now then the question here is, how does it link to a subject, for example? Now, if you're talking about, for example, a geography subject where you're going to be teaching the students north, south, east, west, and the different directions, right? This would be a great, mm. uh, great way to start as well. So like, for example, you could just be asking uh, the class, right? Um, okay, so where is Johor Bahru in relation to Singapore? Is it the north or south or northeast, northwest of Singapore, for example? Yeah, so through such activities, you could also be talking about directions. You could even be talking about bearings in mathematical class. Yeah, so this is just one example. That's so, yeah, that's really a good way to add this into a class. So that's really exciting that these slides can also be implemented into class. And you have lots of other examples we didn't cover, correct? That could go not just for math, they can be for many different subjects. Yeah, so the thing is that if um, the viewers were to download the the tag of slides, there is actually a note section at the end of every slide, right? So Mm -hmm. I have given you some tips on how you could do that in class and how some of these activities could be linked to your lessons as well. That's perfect. Yes. Uh, Vanessa, you did all the hard work for us. (laughs) So. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so like Vanessa also mentioned, you guys can download these, the slide deck and check out that notes page from the link in the description below or on classpoint.io on our website, you can download this template as well. And don't forget, if you don't have Classpoint yet, you can download it and install it on our website and check out our resources page for any tutorials if you don't know how to use Classpoint yet, because we just kind of were the top of the iceberg. So there's so much more for you to learn if you don't know it already. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for sharing all of that wonderful information about how to help your students and their emotions during class. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here as well, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.